Welcome back guys, in my previous What's Next for DLC video, I covered most of the film Canon Dinosaurs, including an outlook into possible Jurassic World Europe and San Diego expansions. But the topic of today's video has roots more from the novel universe. In this video we will discuss the lore behind Jurassic Park Asia, and examine the possibilities of an expansion to this region into Jurassic World evolution by taking a paleontological analysis of the Asia-Pacific region and examining the dig sites and respective dinosaurs, heavily inspired by community suggestions to formulate a selection of interesting species, possibilities for the future of this game. Quite recently, Jurassic World Evolution surpassed 1 million copies sold. In a public statement by Frontier, they announced continued support with content drops for all of their franchises, including Jurassic World Evolution. To quote, the dev team have been reviewing feedback and suggestions from all our official channels. As a result, it is statements like these that really encourage me to make these videos, as I believe the potential of this game is untapped, and only by being ambitious can we have a hand in creating a memorable and lasting game experience. Anyways, let's get onto our video topic. In the first Jurassic Park novel, John Hammond, in a conversation with Henry Wu, explains that he had obtained an island near Guam for the purpose of a Jurassic Park venture in the Asia-Pacific region, alongside the leasing of a large tract in the Azores for Europe. Jurassic Park Japan, as it would be called, was intended to branch out into the Japanese tourism market, targeting the rich upper class who could pay an estimated upwards of $5,000 per day. This was economically sound, as in real life during the 1980s to 90s. Around the time of the novel, there was a huge Japanese tourist boom owing to the peaking of the country's economy. Although it was not explicitly stated which island was to house Jurassic Park Japan, we can assume that it would probably be one of the islands that are part of the Marianas Archipelago, of which Guam is a part of. Volcanic and tropical, it would essentially be similar in climactic conditions as Isla Nublar, which itself was based off the Hawaiian and Cocos Islands. Very isolated and far from any nearby continental mainland, it is no surprise this region would appeal to InGen for a possible future expansion of the Jurassic Park franchise, as isolation is the best first barrier for security purposes. Guam being a huge US military base, featuring a well-established airport and transportation hub, would make an ideal pit stop for tourists before embarking towards Jurassic Park Japan. As we know, this vein of ambition never materialized, as Isla Nublar collapsed upon its own weight of expectation. In the context of evolution lore, we can assume the new Jurassic World project on the Muertos Archipelago has been a huge success, with a thriving and stable dinosaur theme park on Isla Nublar. And now you, as the Executive Director of Operations on Nublar, and Masrani Global, are proceeding towards an expansion into other regions of the world, including Asia. In this modern age, the Asian tourism export has shifted from Japan towards Chinese tourists due to the booming economy of that respective country. Especially prevalent is the paleontology culture, where dinosaurs in China are widely revered and awe-inspiring, whilst paleontology has grown to become one of the most respected fields of science in China. Coupled out with a huge fossil digging practice and great geological formations, it makes China one of the most productive and lucrative nations in terms of dinosaur fossils and dinosaur-loving tourists. As a result, we can assume the Chinese government and Chinese investment groups would readily welcome a dinosaur theme park on their doorstep. In an attempt to appeal to this market, many Chinese dinosaur species must be considered to expand the roster of the Jurassic World Genome Library. Furthermore, Maserani Global Corporation has multiple subsidiaries in the Asia-Pacific region, Based in India, Maserani Energy, although a young company, holds the impressive record of currently having 21% of active vehicles using its oil. They are also involved in operations in Japan with Tatsu Technology, a computer chip manufacturing company. Consequently, Indian and Japanese dinosaurs must also be looked at. To attract the markets of the nearby wealthy Australian middle class, a further expansion of Australian dinosaurs should also be considered. Australia, India and Antarctica were part of the southern supercontinent, Gondwana, which also consisted of South America and Africa. However, the Indian Ocean began to form around the early Jurassic, splitting the former three from the latter two, known as Eastern Gondwana. As a result, Australia, India and Antarctica share strong geological ties, resulting in similar dinosaur group and species. 
Thus, Antarctic dinosaurs will also be considered in this project. Jurassic World Asia will be a massive undertaking, possibly Maserani's most ambitious expansion to date, but will introduce a diverse and novel roster of Asiatic species to the world. As a DLC for Evolution, it will also attempt to achieve similar feats, bringing exotic creatures in exotic environments to the audience to enjoy. So let's take a look at the dinosaurs of this region. As we go through the dig sites, I will suggest changes to current sites and new dig sites to feature new dinosaurs, in an attempt to improve realism and difficulty. We start in the north with Mongolia. The Nemeg Formation in the Gobi Desert is one of the richest Asiatic sites, and one of the latest, featuring from around 70 million years ago from the Maastrichtian Lake Cretaceous. In-game, the Nemeg Formation features the Gallimimus, Parasaurolophus, and Velociraptor. Gallimimus is the only realistic one, as Parasaurolophus was probably added to boost its accessibility, and the fact Saurolophus, another hadrosaur of similar name, appears here. Finally, the Velociraptor, it technically appears in earlier Campanian rocks underlying this formation, but I understand its addition here due to the lack of the Jodokta formation, and maybe two sites were needed for this classic dinosaur. I recommend removing the para and potentially removing the Velociraptor. For the new additions, we start with the Allioramus, a medium-sized theropod that is essentially Asia's Albertosaurus, developing into the smaller, agile and lighter-built Tyrannosaurs. Knowledge of Allioramus is still murky owing to sparse remains, but it was destined for an appearance in Operation Genesis, until ultimately cut, probably for the Albertosaurus. Nevertheless, there is very little Tyrannosaurid representation in Asia, and medium carnivore representation for that matter as well. And Allioramus being a fairly well-known species makes it a fairly worthwhile choice for an addition. The largest Onifomimosaur ever discovered, Dinocurus has been described as one of the most bizarre dinosaurs, with its classification indeterminate for some time. After some new remains were unearthed in 2014, most of the skeleton of this mysterious creature is now known, detailing it as a bipedal omnivore that was not adapted to speed, unlike other Onifomimosaurs. Rather, it was believed their bulk and sheer size would deter most medium carnivores, such as Allioramus. Sporting a sail on its back, similar to Spinosaurus, and sporting the largest arms of any bipedal dinosaur, outfitted with three blunt claws, probably used to reel in tree branches or foliage to feed, definitely would be a spectacular addition to the roster. I've mentioned this pair multiple times in my past videos, but it is another famous Pachycephalosaurus that can possibly be added irrespective of this DLC idea in an Operation Genesis pack, enhancing the small herbivore variety in Asia. These cute critters have a lot of sentimental value for many players of that previous game, and would complement this formation by offering a commonplace dinosaur to pair with larger herbivores in larger exhibits. Hamalocephalae may be a junior synonym of the larger Prenocephalae, and there has been a general upswelling of an idea that the flat-headed pachycephalosaurs represented the juvenile specimens of dome-headed adults, similar to how Dracorex is possibly representing the juvenile growth stage of Pachycephalosaurus. As a result, differentiating between these two species will honestly come down to whether sentimental value or common scientific acceptance is respected, and personally, I don't mind either way. Asia is particularly rich in sauropod remains, but there is only one represented in-game with the Momenchisaurus. Smaller to medium-sized sauropods are particularly underrepresented, and the rich Nemeg formation should have its own namesake dinosaur, the Nemegtosaurus. A smaller titanosaur similar to Saltosaurus and Rapidosaurus, the lizard from the Nemeg is believed to be one of the last sauropods on Earth before the KT extinction event happened. Living alongside a plethora of Nemeg species, its relative size to the others meant it would be well protected from predation, unless from the largest carnivore this formation, the Tarbosaurus. One of the larger ankylosaur varieties, Cychania was discovered in a pristine state of preservation, giving its scientific name meaning. Owing to its detailed, articulated skeleton, and the discovery of other specimens, Cychania is one of the most extensively studied dinosaurs from the Nemeg formation. Described as exceptionally robust with various skeletal fusions and ossifications, supported on the outside with various osteoderm formations, reinforced plates with sharp conical spikes, 
Saichania is a well-armored Mongolian super tank. This is my foremost pick for Ankylosaur variety from this area. This dinosaur's inclusion in the Namek formation was probably the reason why Frontier chose to express some scientific liberties and place the Parasaurolophus here. But due to my suggestion to remove the para, it would be replaced by the Saurolophus. Two species are described. The Osborne North American variant is discovered in Canada's Horseshoe Canyon formation, whilst the Asian variant is the Angus Thorostra species. Although both species are almost identical in composition and thus of the same genus, the biggest difference is their size, with the Osborne species at 10 meters in length. As a result, Saurolophus was an important and dominant large herbivore in the Nemegd, but in Horseshoe Canyon it faced competition with other hadrosaurs and thus was much rarer and smaller in size. Due to Asia's immense hadrosaur populations, a topic which I will further expand as we progress through this episode, I feel Saurolophus is an important variety and thus needs to be considered. The quintessential Asiatic Tyrannosaur, Tarbosaurus was as successful as Tyrannosaurus was in its geographical niche and was most definitely the apex predator of the Nemegd. At around 12 meters in length, it was only slightly smaller than its brethren, but sported a more rigid skull that could handle more stress, possibly an indication of its hunting patterns against sauropods like the previously mentioned Nemegdosaurus. As one of the largest predators on our list, I cannot fathom an Asian DLC without this iconic dinosaur and would readily welcome it to the game. One of the most requested dinosaurs, and another I have harped on constantly, it's little surprise for this species to capture the imagination of all dinosaur lovers. Its distinct giant claws form the basis of an otherwise ill-determined animal, but like others in its family, they were probably bipedal omnivorous theropods who utilized these claws to reel in vegetation or dig up insects. With evidence of feathering on some family members, scientists now believe most, if not all, of the Therizinosaurs were feathered, including its closest relatives Oligosaurus and Segnosaurus, which would be a contentious issue for Frontier, but I also can't see them ignoring this species for long, so get ready for a featherless Therizinosaurus. So that's my roundup for the Nemeg Formation. When this dig site was announced, I wasn't surprised as it is particularly rich and productive in dinosaur fossils. So we were expecting a lot of species from here, but to hit release with only one scientifically accurate option ultimately was disappointing. Our next Mongolian site and our first new custom site is the nearby Jodokta Flaming Cliffs. It underlies the Nemegd and thus is of slightly earlier Campanian age. Gallimimus could be added here as it is possibly connected to some indeterminate cranial elements found here, whilst also reducing the rarity of this dinosaur and allow greater accessibility. Furthermore, indeterminate Tyrannosaur fossils believed to be Tarbosaurus could present this species as an option here. Finally, the Jodokta was the original discovery location of the Velociraptor mongoliensis and thus should definitely be introduced here. A famous species in its own right, Oviraptor had a strong shout to be in the initial release regardless of its lack of reference in the Jurassic Park lore. Oviraptor and its relatives occur heavily in the fossil record of Mongolia and northern China, indicating high real-life populations. It was one of the most bird-like of the theropods, with such features as a toothless beak, light bones and extensive feather covering, including a tail fan, thus making it an extremely interesting dinosaur to add to the game. Pinacosaurus, or the Plank Lizard, is the most well-known Ankylosaur, due to it being the most numerous Ankylosaur in the fossil record. It was much more lighter built and low slung than its other contemporaries, very similar to the early Cretaceous Crichtonpelta, not to be confused with Crichtonsaurus. Like most others, it was equipped with a tail club, albeit relatively small, and thus decently protected from small predators such as Velociraptor but would do little to deter a hungry Tarbosaurus. As the most extensively studied Ankylosaur in history, it would set an interesting proposition for an inclusion. The nimble-sized Protoceratops is one of the most famous species from this formation, especially due to its involvement in the famous fighting posture with the Velociraptor. At about the size of a sheep, it would pose obvious technical constraints for implementation into Jurassic World evolution, 
but is a better alternative for the law connected microceratus. Also having options for less derived ceratopsids such as this species would greatly enhance variety. Our final Mongolian site is the Bayan Shire, and interestingly its geology covers the Cenomanian to Santonian ages, making it one of the earliest late Cretaceous fossil sites in Asia. It is comparable to the Iran Dabasu formation, but unlike other Mongolian sites, it is not as productive and features only a handful of interesting species. Our first is the Achillobator, the largest dromaeosaur from Asia. It is also fairly derived, making it a close relative to Utah Raptor, and essentially both animals are their continent's main dromaeosaur genus. These earlier Santonian formations seem to lack a major large carnivore. Crucially, the Tarbosaurus, which would generally dominate the later Campanian and Maastrichtian ages. Thus, it is thought the roaming packs of Achillobator were the apex predators of their environment. An interesting proposition for our list to provide a small carnivore with a more elongated and agile build compared to the in game Velociraptor. The Garuda Mimic was a small Anifomimosaur that was part of the Dinocuridae family, thus, a close relative of the giant Dinocurus. As such, it was not well adapted for speed, like later more derived Anifomimids, with underdeveloped musculature of its legs and much larger arm proportions. It was believed this primitive member's main defense against predation was herding in huge flocks like modern day zebras or wildebeest. Microceratus has been included because it has a strong leverage in the law, as it was part of the Jurassic World media promotion and was present on Isla Nublar in the events of 2015. As an Asiatic basal ceratopsian species, it would be a likely roster candidate, but its minuscule size might pose some issues. However, my last video covering attractions and buildings, I mentioned the Consolgonifus cave, and that could be utilized to cater to dinosaurs like this, but otherwise Protoceratops offers much more size and popularity. Segnosaurus is a smaller relative of its cousin, the Ferrazinosaurus, but is almost equally as famous due to it being the namesake of the old Segnosauridae classification, which directed these dinosaurs in the suborder of Sauropodomorphs. Due to an outdated idea that these slow, cumbersome and sloth-like creatures were relatives of prosauropods, Segnosaurus and its kin were believed to be herbivorous or at least omnivorous, and like Ferrazinosaurus was probably fettered quite extravagantly. The Bayan Shire fuss features mostly obscure species, but it does have the advantage of containing a Jurassic World lore dinosaur in Microceratus. We now move into China and into the nearby Inner Mongolia region with the Iran Dabasu Formation, at a slightly later time period of the Santonian age compared to the Bayan Shire. However, both sites are comparable in fauna and dinosaur excavations. Due to the lack of apparent large tyrannosaurs during this time, there is also a sense of gigantism which allowed family groups such as the Oviraptorans, who were predominantly built small and light, to grow enormous and dominate the large predator niche. The current roster in-game consists of Archaeonifomimus and Velociraptor, which is entirely accurate and therefore no changes are necessary. This medium-sized basal hadrosaur is believed to be the earliest known hadrosauroid, and thus a precursor to the later derived Campanian and Maastrichtian age hadrosaurs perhaps even an early relative or predecessor to Lambiosaurus. With iguanodont-like features, it may serve as an evolutionary link between the early Cretaceous iguanodontids and the later dominant hadrosaurs. There is also some evidence of a head crest, but due to incompleteness, it has not been confirmed. If anything, it probably sported a minimal atonement similar to early hadrosaurs of its kin. This giant Oviraptorosaurian is another famous Asian species and would be a great addition to the Iron Dabasu formation. At 300 times more massive than Oviraptor, it thus needed much more nutrition and probably was the apex predator in an otherwise absent large carnivore niche. This can be deduced through the lack of any large Tyrannosaurids such as Tarbosaurus at this dig site. Furthermore, Gigantoraptor was equipped with long hind legs that were capable of fast movement large claws which were its probable main weapons, and a strong shearing bite force, good genetic traits for a hunter. However, the diet is still uncertain and Gigantoraptor could equally be a giant herbivore similar to Ferrazinosaurus, but like other Oviraptorans, was probably omnivorous. 
That's the roundup for the Iron Dabasu Formation. As you can see, it is not as rich as the other Inner Mongolian sites like the Nemegd or Jadokta, but it does contain a couple of interesting species for expansion. Into northeastern China, back into a Maastrichtian age formation of the Yulangzi. When this dig site was revealed, I was expecting some big names to come out of here, but since then it seems to be a waste basket site for the Crichtonsaurus and Sintaosaurus, which otherwise should not be here as it is scientifically inaccurate. Yulangzi's environment has been compared to other Maastrichtian North American sites such as the Scollard or Horseshoe Canyon formations. Indeterminate Tarbosaurus remains are also discovered here, and due to the dominance of this Tyrannosaurid in Maastrichtian Asian environments, it's probably of no surprise, and may deserve a slot here as well. The Yulangzi is particularly rich in Lambiosaurian remains, and indicates that the Asian varieties were the last remaining Lambiosaurian populations on Earth, as opposed to the North American ones. One of the key species behind this idea was Choronosaurus, whose discovery puts it at one of the last remaining Lambiosaurian hadrosaurs on Earth, whereas the Yulangzi was dominated by up to 90% of Lambiosaurian fossils, Ceratopsian and Titanosaurid remains are apparently absent from this area, whereas in North America, Lambiosaurian populations had effectively phased out by 73 million years ago, and these regions were generally dominated by Ceratopsids and Titanosaurs. Choronosaurus is essentially China's Parasaurolophus, and both species are remarkably similar and believed to be close relatives. Named for the Greek mythical figure Charon, the ferryman of Hades who would carry souls of the deceased across the river Styx into the underworld, which relates to the species' discovery on the banks of the Amur River, dividing China and Russia, and inside an accumulated deathbed of numerous individuals. Choronosaurus would be one of the most numerous Lambiosaurines in China and possibly the preferred prey of such predators as Tarbosaurus. If Choronosaurus was to Parasaurolophus, then Allorotitan was to Carifosaurus. This other Lambiosaurine was instead uncovered on the Russian bank of the Amur River and sported a hatchet shaped head crest, possibly the most distinct and unique skull of any hadrosaur. Like Lambiosaurus, it had one of the highest crest volume to skull size ratios and has probably emitted a booming vocal sound. No doubt, Allura Titan would form herds with Choronosaurus akin to hadrosaur varieties in North America. Although only indeterminate Ornithomimus fossils were discovered here, the relation between the Yulangzi and North American sites and the family's common occurrences in both continents indicates possibilities of Ornithomimus appearance in China. However, the genus itself is under pending re-evaluation since 2015, and thus many species of Anifomimus, Asian and North American, have still yet to be fully described and fully studied. Although an argument for the Anifomimus in the current game can be described as sort of copy and paste, Anifomimus as the namesake and arguably most famous species of this group deserves a place on the roster, whether in Asia or not. Although not as productive and extensively studied as other Chinese sites, the Yulangzi Formation is still an important paleontological site that deserves some better expansion rather than becoming a wastebasket site for scientific inaccuracies. Onto our third new site introduced, and the Yishan Formation is one of China's most important paleontological sites and has contributed to a greater understanding of not just dinosaurs but all animal life. Its greatest discoveries have been well-preserved fossils that feature direct evidence of feathering and the early Cretaceous age of this site makes it important to dissect the history and extent of feathered dinosaurs in general. Particularly rich in Dromaeosaurid, Trudontid, Deinonychosaurs and other avian lynx, it produces a host of important dinosaurs that are no bigger than a meter in length and definitely way too small for an addition in Jurassic World Evolution so I will skip out on them. I believe however the Crichtonsaurus should be moved here from the Yulangzi as it is in the locality of the Liaoning province, regardless of the geological time differences. B. Piaosaurus is an early Ferrazinosauroid that influenced the classification of Ferrazinosaurs to be more closely related to Solarosaurian theropods rather than sauropodomorphs. A small dinosaur in its own right, B. Piaosaurus has been discovered beautifully preserved with feathers and as a possible early ancestor of the later likewise feathered Ferrazinosaurs. D. Long is a basal tyrannosauroid, which means it was a primitive member of the latter derived and much larger tyrannosaurs. 
It forms an evolutionary link between the Jurassic basal tyrannosauroids such as Proceratosaurus and Guanlong, and the apex predators of the late Cretaceous such as Aliaramus and Tarbosaurus. Because of this and the fact it was discovered with a covering of protofeathers, propelled the debate on whether or not later tyrannosaurs retained this trait. Nevertheless, D. Long's fame in the Chinese paleontological community warrants an addition to the roster as a nimble small carnivore relative of its much larger and fearsome relatives. Time for the main attraction of this roster. The majestic flagship U. Tyrannus is currently the largest known dinosaur that has been discovered with direct evidence of feathering. Its popularity has steadily increased since its discovery in 2012 and it is one of the most requested community dinosaurs for Jurassic World evolution. Like D. Long, its importance to the family's feathery understanding cannot be understated, and as a fairly large carnivore in its own right, it would be a welcome addition to expand the medium carnivore roster. The feathered tyrant is now one of the most awe-inspiring dinosaurs of recent history, and has been portrayed in spectacular beauty in its involved media, but it's time for it to finally grace the world that is Jurassic World. And with that, rounds up the additions for the Yishan Formation, and it is clear this site is filled with important, feathered dinosaurs that may pose a major obstacle to be introduced into the game. It's now time to stop resting on our laurels and finally bring feathered dinosaurs into the greater realm of Jurassic World media. Join us for part 2 where we cover the rest of the Jurassic World Asia roster. I'd like to give a shout out to my Patreon supporters. If you enjoy my content and wish to support me further, check out my Patreon link in the description.